you, normally you get all giddy and do, what, do, the, the, do you're, the you're mistaken that <laughs> uh, the opening. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. But you go ahead. Do the opening. You have a thing you want to do? Go ahead and do your thing. <laughs> what are you looking at me for? Fine, we're the printer panel podcast. And we're on YouTube. Woohoo! Okay, that's this is the too YouTube, far? YouTube too far. opening before the, 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 YouTube opening. the podcast. The podcast. So, so uh, hey everybody, thanks so much for joining in. We really appreciate it. Uh, it's a it's a early Sunday morning, and uh, we're recording here in the back room of Nirvana, yeah, <laughs> Nirvana <laughs> Knoxville. <laughs> Don't you dare call us a studio. I was going to say studio. I knew you were going to get mad. Do not call this a studio. This is not a studio. Knoxville studio. I mean, don't get me wrong. I really appreciate the use of the space. I'm not in any way disparaging it, but it is, in no term could we call this a studio. Um, eventually. In the, have an echo, do we? In the, There's no echo. Oh, no, no hell no. no. We've got great it's equipment good, yeah. that covers that, but, so, yeah. So you gonna do your thing or not? Well, I'll do my thing when we open the oh, podcast. Okay. All right, guys. <clears throat> what we're about to record, what you guys are gonna watch, is uh, the podcast recording for um, not February fifth. Boy, I went a week too far. Uh, February twelfth, um, and we're gonna just review all the all the fun things. The things. This is the review of the people and the stuff at the place at the time at with the, the stuff. stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now you're gonna when I press record here and get us going. Are you gonna? Nope. I'm just gonna let you do the opening. No, no, you no, do it. Come on. No, you can get mad. No, no, no you can get mad. <laughs> Keep doing the thing. <laughs> you enjoy this part. Too much. All right, guys. Well, hey, y'all, watch this. I don't get to be goofy that much no more, so I get to I gotta do it in here sometimes. <laughs> <clears throat> Come on, we're in East Tennessee. You gotta give me that. Come on now. What are you trying to say about the place I live? I, I live here too. I'm a Virginia boy. Come on now. I mean, we, we're, I'm a Southerner too. I can have a Southern accent. <laughs> Why do people keep saying, when I say I'm from the South, they go, well, you're from Virginia. It, it, it's a Southern state. It has always been a Southern state. My favorite is, it was the capital of the freaking Confederacy. It was the Southern state. But I'm somehow not a southerner. I'm from Virginia. Okay. Sure thing. Because you live in the mountains of Tennessee. I can still be a southerner. I'm still looking to be a southerner. Look, I got a little twang. No, not a twang. Are you practicing your five-minute set? <laughs> what exactly is going on here? <laughs> is this your type five? Just start recording. You are recording, are you? No, not okay. yet. <laughs> Gosh. Just wait for you to get it all out. All right, keep going. We're all recording right. here, and well, all fine, of this is fine, going on the internet. Fine, I, You do whatever you want with this, but keep Okay, whenever you're ready. I'm fine. You gonna do the intro or am I gonna no, do the intro? No, you do the intro. Because you're gonna get mad when I do it. So you know. I don't get mad. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Printed Panel Podcast. I'm David. And I'm Garen. <laughs> We're here to do the uh, February 12th review episode. See, I didn't do the thing. You thought I was gonna do the thing. I didn't do it that say. So proud of you. It's Christmas time in the Rockies. See, I didn't do anything like that. Nothing. The I hell know just where that happened. Came from. I think that was from the office, maybe. Christmas time in the Rockies. That was office? I can't I don't anyway. know. Can we, can we, can we please talk about comic book now? We're gonna I'm frightened. Take two. Guys, if, if you're if you're not watching this on YouTube, please go check out a new segment that we started this week. Um, who's is bigger? No, no who's is bigger has been out for a month. <laughs> um, we started doing a books on a budget segment mm -hmm. where we, we go through and talk about the top four that we select in our previews episode. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of this episode, we, we always give our book of the week. Mm -hmm. Um, so go check out that segment. It's like five minutes. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I think it does better in the visual spectrum, but take that time. Check us out on YouTube. We really appreciate it. Nice. So it's fun. You have a giant stack of comic books for a week that there weren't that many great I, I comic books. I don't know what you're talking about. So I'm going to shut up, take a little nap, let Garen <laughs> do his thing for, you know, a while. <laughs> that is rude. So, um, are you done yet? Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> this is Undone by Blood, the Jane Foster shirt. No, the, um, the, the, the <laughs> Shadow of, of a Wanted Man by Aftershock Comics. I love Westerns, and this is kind of a Western feel. So there's, there's actually two books in one. So basically you're reading this old pulp uh, book from uh, like a Louis L'Amour kind of thing about a cowboy who's getting revenge for his wife's death. And so you're reading that. but You need also, to do that accent all but, the time. But, but uh, you're also reading about the fact that there's this young girl here. Her, have, you, have you read The Flash, partner? Her, <laughs> her, 
Ah, oh, really? You had to do that? You couldn't just... Okay, so her whole family was murdered. She's the only one that survived, and now she's come back for revenge to find the people who murdered her family so she can kill them right back. It's actually pretty good so far. Kind of see where it goes. Uh, we have, from Dark Horse, we have Kill Whitey Donovan Part 3. So we start to see the flashback of why Anna here is trying to kill Whitey Donovan. Hey, Anna's white. Yeah, it's Hattie that's the black girl, the, the slave. I, I thought Hattie was the one trying to kill the guy. No, no, no. It's uh, Hattie is with Anna. So basically, Anna's sister. I grab this and she's getting trade. she's she's engaged to this Whitey Donovan kid, guy, and he winds up abusing her and killing her before they even get married. So no, wait a minute. She's dead. No, no. Anna's alive. I didn't. The sister's the sister's dead. So she's taking revenge. Well, basically, you see a flashback of what's happened at this cotillion thing and. It's southern white gentlemen here. So, uh, now that's the action um, you should do all the time. So, but you also find out, you see what's going on is that basically the 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 Rebs have been camped out and now the, the, the Union has found them as, as massacring them. And so these the, the two girls get away. Not before they figure out that, that the slave controller on their plantation is now chasing them down. So it's pretty cool. The Printed Panel Podcast featuring Garen Dickerson as Blanche Devereaux. <laughs> <laughs> so, now we get to DC Picture Comics. Picture it, Cecily, 1912. Oh, I do declare. <laughs> so... <laughs> Blanche Devereaux. All right, so Batman's Grave number five. The the story okay. of that time that Bruce Wayne lost his his fiance <laughs> in the Wild West and had to go on the no no oh that's a good one though I'd, I I'd read that I'd one. read that all right yeah. so uh, no in this in is this essentially what's happened is is um, uh, Jim Gordon thinks he's outfoxed Batman invites him to Arkham to go confront this guy who's the one that they believe is the mastermind of this new stuff that's going on. Is he played by Gary Oldman in this one? Because I'm pretty sure Gary Oldman could have outfoxed the Christian Bell Batman. Probably, yeah, because Christian Bell Batman was Christian Bell. Anyway, so he gets to, he, of course, Batman walks into Arkham and um, Jeremiah Arkham is like, oh, so we've never met. He says, okay, Jerry. He said, no, my name's Jeremiah. <laughs> so um, he says, uh, they said, well, you know, I've always been looking forward to having you here. He says, why? He's like, well, because I definitely can help you. There's nothing wrong with me. I feel fine. The whole time he's trying to accuse him, Batman of being crazy. So, Jerry. The whole time they don't know it's a setup that uh, old Jerry has set them up. And there's now a battle to get out of Arkham with him and Jim Gordon. It's actually pretty great. So, can't wait for more. <gasps> the big book, though. Oh, man. Okay, so... Guys, if you go back and you rewatch or re-listen to uh, the the Last prior week, week yep. and maybe a few before that in the previous episode, I think I think in the previews issue where this was done back in what was this? This is February, so in December, um, I said, "Man, I just don't know. I don't know if I can drop five bucks on 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 this particular thing because I'm not ready to say goodbye to Alfred." Maybe I think. You're drinking cheer wine? Wow. I love cheer wine. That's very southern of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the accent doesn't get better with cheer wine. I'm just saying. I, I you think hoping, it would, but it wouldn't. I was hoping. So, guys, I if you didn't pick up Batman Pennyworth, rest in peace. Um, and it's I, a one shot. This, this is... Yeah. Number, I, that's you, one, it's and, number one, but it's... The one and only. It's funny when you get when people. It's when when people are on a budget, and we have a lot of people at LCS on a budget. They can only do so much. They're like all they, of the smart people are on a comic book budget. We're just not very smart. They they look at this. They go, um, is this something? It, yes, it's in continuity, and yes, it's a one shot. And they're like, oh, oh, I'll get it then. <laughs> I think it sets the stage for what happens next with Batman because oh yes, they've not just. So. I think if you remove Alfred by himself, but you still have Dick. Don't do it, Grayson. Don't Dick Grayson. If you still have Dick, then um, then then Dick keeps bats grounded. I think if you remove Alfred and and Dick, but you can get Tim to step up, yep. then you're fine. I think if you if you can't get Tim to step up, if Barbara loves loves Bruce the way that she should, step away for one second. Yeah, man. Then. Uh, then, then everything's fine. But because you've removed all the pieces of the puzzle, there's there is zero chance of of good things. It's 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 not a good scene. It's a bad scene. And I guess I'm just going to continue to talk as Garen has stepped away from the podcast at the moment. No, it was really great. Um, I think that 
this is an unfettered Bruce who doesn't know how to relate to, to Damien. Um, I think this is a, a Bruce that is more and more lost in his own head, and his guiding light is um, going to be Catwoman. And, and Tom King set up the, the, the Catwoman connection, the bat, cat, bat, cat, which now is going to sway his morals a bit. I mean, I think that I think that a Batman warring with the Joker, which is coming in Tinian's book. Oh, very much so. Tinian's book. Man, we need to contact this guy and be like, please help me pronounce your name correctly. If you, if, I, on, I, on Twitter I love it you. says Tinian. Ty. Yeah, it does. So, as a pronunciation. But, but did he say that, or is this some internet thing? I don't know. I mean, we can look to find out. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, speakerphone probably wasn't the best choice of how to take care of that. But my, anyway. my Unfortunately, my... <laughs> um, Not optional. No. So... The one thing I'll say about Pennyworth, the thing that really kind of got me was was Damien. Yeah. Because Damien... Bruce doesn't know how to relate to his son. And he, Alfred was the one doing that. Alf, but, but that's Alfred been knew true. how to relate to all of the boys. Correct. And, and Barbara, and, and too. And Barbara. Yeah. I mean, he knew how to relate to all of them. He understood that they were still kids at heart. He understood that, yes, they had to do crime fighting. And he literally... I mean, Damien... Went, but Damien was the one I think was his favorite. Because it was an actual child of Bruce Wayne. This was a big deal for him, and the fact that he's gone is a major blow. Um, and I, I think Damien is taking it harder than anybody else because I think he blames himself. He does. He very much blames himself. So he thinks he could have taken Bane down. <laughs> I mean, he ultimately did take Bane down right, but, and has many times, right, but, but, <clears throat> but... This is one of those cases when it wasn't going to work. So, um, yeah, very sad. Very good book. Very well done, and it's it is. If, I think the best books are emotion evoking, though. I, I, yeah, I, I think that there are books that that I need the wham boom zap right. uh, feeling out of. And but then there's, there's there's books like Huck that you oh, need yeah. that you need that emotional release because it's just I mean just a, a deep phenomenal movie a, a book excuse me movie book whatever animated whatever they're gonna do so, the theater of the, the mind theater is the well theater of mind, exactly all right all right next so we've belabored that your books are there buddy Sorry. Green Lantern <laughs> Fine. Fine. all right Two, kids <laughs> let me ah. just say you kicked the camera I kicked the camera <laughs> let me just say awesome book. This, this Very is, well done. This is Grant Morrison. You're amazing. What? <laughs> this is the. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna keep reading. And the reason I'm gonna keep reading is we have an upcoming Grant Morrison special <laughs> that we're gonna record with a friend of mine who loves Grant Morrison. And there's a whole there's a whole background story behind it. I want to love Grant Morrison, but there are moments that Grant Morrison does what Grant Morrison does to something I love, and I'm like, what the hell? Now the good thing is. I hate Hal Jordan. I have always hated Hal Jordan. Um, How I, do you hate Hal Jordan? He's so awesome. He's not. He's a douche. Well, okay, that's true. Too. Okay, so so let me be clear. He hasn't always been a complete butthole. He really hasn't. Batman. Batman is is. Batman is an absentee father. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, for multiple children, and he keeps making more. <laughs> yeah. Literally, in one case, horrible person in some ways. Yeah. He's a he's a jerk. Yeah. But but. I still like him better than I like Hal Jordan. Because no kids. Hal Jordan's like, woo, space and <laughs> screw Earth, the one place you're supposed to protect things. And woo, space. And he thinks he's too good for everything. And he every does, time the only he does, he does. Doesn't Nathan Fillion voice him in one thing? Oh yeah. That's the only time I like Green Lantern. Yeah. So here okay. I like all of the other Lantern versions better than Because Hal we do a podcast we talk about the comics. Let's talk about the comic itself. This is starting a whole new version of the, of the Guardians, okay? They're In a young, drug-addled... But wait, hold on. <laughs> but, but, but we're talking about new Guardians, okay? Because the old Guardians basically have gone off on a new quest. Basically, they're done. It's like it's like in Lord of the Rings... Which when, is just an insane concept. But, but You're but the listen, Guardians of the universe. Remember, and, and I think I'll just screw off to the next dimension. Like, But that's kind of it. They're done. And essentially, they're going off to die. Essentially, is what they're going to wind up doing. So this is the Only next... Only they can't. This is the... Well, they're immortal. But this is the next generation of the, of the Guardians. So this is what we're going to wind up seeing. The, the groundbreaking thing here is that we do get something brand new. We also have a new lantern sidekick who's made of salt. Was it salt? 
It looked like salt. I, 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 every time I started paying attention to that character, I saw the character from Money Shot with him just cuddling it and it exploding. And and I just couldn't. See, and that's okay, the it, worst part I did, too. It was bad. <laughs> Thank you, Tim Seeley. You're a wonderful man. I do love Tim Seeley. All right, go. Uh, Superman Heroes. I didn't even yell at him for 20 minutes. Um... Basically, this is this, and, is this is the premise of all the other heroes' reactions to yeah Superman revealing himself. Yeah. And basically, as Clark the, whole, it, the Clark is Clark Cal whatever is talking about the article he's supposed to write about himself revealing himself, and it's but don't use yourself as a source. Exactly. So this is this is actually really good. This is well told. I was pretty impressed with this book. So this is this is good. My argument against this is the Wonder Twins are right there, <laughs> front and center. Wonder Twins. Powers activate. <laughs> Incest powers activate. So, um, last for DC from you. Any more DC? Or are you done? No, buddy. Okay. What you see is what uh, you get. Superman number 20. Essentially, there is a competing... There's a competing news organization, the Daily Star, that essentially is basically trying to scoop the planet. They can't quite figure out how to do it. And then... They Given th that Superman is... Uh, right. Yeah. Um, and they, of course, talk about how Superman could be a fake, could be a phony, and, and of course, they're like, no, I've seen him do this in person. It's a whole retrospective on what's really going on. At the end, you see Lana Lang. <laughs> uh, she pops up, but we haven't seen her in a long time because we thought she was dead because she did die. As Superwoman. Was a woman, exactly. Yeah. So, how the hell we have Sue Lana Lang back, not entirely sure. Uh, what's, funny, what's funny, though, is at some point, they are the sensationalists are now accusing Superman of saying he's king of Earth because of this new intergalactic peace treaty they've got where he's fighting Mongol. He says, This is new intergalactic peace, let's all have a treaty, and he's, I'll be the representative of Earth, not the king of Earth, the representative of Earth. He and John are gonna be the representatives on this council. Well, of course, there's no council right now because Mongol is destroying the council and killing everybody he can. So, they of course they go to Lois. They track Lois down. She's in a secret place. They track Lois down, who now has a blonde wig on. <laughs> she's trying to run. And they track her down and say, why is your husband saying he's king of the earth? So that's kind of where we leave off. I think Lois Lane, though, is perhaps one of the sexiest women in comics. Now, and, and for those of you on the podcast, I use air quotes. <laughs> she just, like, is the most capable and intelligent and... Um, just a fun, fun character. I, and I've said many times, with DC... You care less about the main character in the story and more about the, the supporting like, cast, yeah. uh, which is why them cutting away so much of, of Batman's supporting cast and, and, and untethering them from Batman is going to be some really compelling Batman. See, I've always felt the sexiest woman, um, the sexiest female character in comic books is Catwoman. I've always thought that. Uh, not just the way he's, he's drawn, but the fact that she's mysterious and there's always uh, plans within plans. I just think that's that mystery is part of that's the sexiness that she has. Well, I do declare. So I, she just, she's, I think she's incredible. So moving on from DC, because I got more of my stack to go. So <laughs> IDW gave us G.I. Joe number five. So what we don't know about this is more the history of the, the Cobra taking over uh, America. Uh, at one point, Indianapolis was full of dreadnoughts. Nobody really knew it, but Indianapolis is full of dreadnoughts. I think Indianapolis is full of dreadnoughts. But could be now. So they send bats, the Cobra, the Cobra, the BATs, the, the the robots in to basically wipe everybody out. Almost all the dreadnoughts are all killed. Uh, all but sixty something are left over. And essentially, now you have to support the 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 group. So we have Jinx coming in with Roadblock, I believe, to go in and kind of re try to recruit the dreadnoughts to the GI Joe side. Because they can recruit the Dreadnoughts, then they actually have a fighting chance. And of course, they do get them. They get they help them escape because they know Indianapolis is going to be completely wiped off the map. Um, so they help them escape, but don't really quite recruit the Dreadnoughts like they think they're going to. I think eventually they will. I uh, think Jinx is pretty great. I love her as a character. I, I remember the the episode of GI Joe where they introduced her and Tunnel Rat and. There's like four in that group. I love Tunnel Rat, man. Yeah. <clears throat> um, from IDW, we have Star Trek Year 5, the Valentine's Day special. So, <laughs> Kirk has always been the Lothario, more than Riker ever was. Riker, of course, slept with a lot of different aliens, but this man sets the record. So, what's interesting is... Only because I haven't been to space. <laughs> wrong with you not a All damn right. thing so 
So what's interesting is he finally meets his match. He finally meets he meets his female self, and then she's this captain of one of the other starships. Uh, she <laughs> she is him in every way, shape, or form. Uh, he comes in and, and swoops in and takes a kill from her. She does the same thing back to him. She proposes to him, and he basically waits six weeks and finally says no. Uh, he then becomes an admiral. She is nearly she's she. They think that she's killed stopping a black hole from from taking over the soul system, and um, she comes back later. She goes back several years later. I mean, she's fine. She's she's made it through, but. Uh, at the same time, she's damaged, and of course, he he then says, "Well, you know, we could," and she says, "No, no, you've been busted down to captain again. I'm going to be an admiral. No thanks." <laughs> Pretty great story. So, uh, if you like if you like Star Wars, this is a good one. Star Trek. Star Trek. I said Star Wars, didn't I? You did. That was bad. Yeah. Shame on me. Hey, internet, give him a hard time about it. Shame on me for doing that. <laughs> Trek Wars, whatever. Same difference. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I am Those no longer on the podcast in any way associated no with Garen. Can, because can all, of, see that face. all of all of the Trekkies and all wow. of the Star Wars fans are all going to converge on you when you said Trek Wars, same difference. Well, Star Galactic is in there too. Same same thing, right? <laughs> so. You're going to get Starbucked. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you get Starbucked. Bam! <laughs> that just happened. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about safe sex number let's, six. Let's not. This is pretty good. Um, the the nerd guy, the one who actually kind of held back the whole time, winds up sacrificing himself at the end of the book. And there's gonna be an issue seven, so um, it's been really good. They expose I'm, the oh yeah the party. Oh, oh yeah, I'm 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 disappointed you dropped it because they're gonna want to we'll talk to you about it. But you know, I don't know, it's a good book. I've enjoyed continuing it. That up. issue three was so awful. So uh, I'm now done my last image book. This is Tartarus number one. Not entirely sure what happened in this book. There's a prison riot, a prison escape. It's this famous woman who is this pirate. She goes to go, and it's set in, in space, and she gets her. I must just all be like the her, Track Wars, get Battle her Space. Daughter, whatever. Battle Space, something. Yeah. This is. Um, <clears throat> I will say, the story was not bad. The art is not my taste. Just like One Woman Dead Earth is not really our taste either. The story is fantastic. I'm going to continue reading it, but the story in this one was not something the I think I'm going to continue reading. The story reading. is fantastic. You're going to keep reading it? Yeah. It's a great story. Wonder Woman Dead Earth? Oh, oh. No, wow. this I one. No, you... no. Ah. No, no, no. Wonder Woman Dead Earth. I surprised if it did No, this is, no. So, prior to our recording today, uh, Garen's wife and I were soundly heckling him on the amount of um, indigestible books that he partakes in. And so that was that was the example she pulled out of his stack and was like, "What's this?" You know, sometimes you gotta take a risk, and this was a big one, and uh, it did not pay off. Sometimes you gotta take one for the team, and you did. <laughs> did yeah. So, uh, Amazing Spider-Man number thirty-nine, and you paid five ninety-nine for it. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nick Spencer, you you kind of kind of wean him, buddy. Uh, even I have to say, I know you dropped ASM. Yeah. Um, yeah, even Kindred I, at this point doesn't. I'm not. There's no Kindred. This is basically all about J. Jonah Jameson and I, I, those two dudes. Like in comics, I kind of wish they'd just get a hotel room, get it over with. Like, there's there's better stories out there right now, and this is this is the kind of bothers me. It's a very me. political way to say that. Yeah. So, um, arts are great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not Otley, but yeah, it so, does but mimic it's very style. nice. So it's nice. Um, now, I will say my book, I love, I've loved every minute of this book. This is Agents of Wanda number six. Of course, is the Gwen Stacy cover. I don't know what the other cover is. These guys are awesome, man. They're goofy, and Deadpool is in this, and he, they basically find a secret shield facility that is housing the live wires. Now, you remember the live wires from a while, from a while no. ago? No. Essentially, live wires are LMDs that have been pre programmed to kind of fight for good. And they all have their own weird, stupid code, code names like Hammerhead and Dingleberry and stuff like that. Essentially, What's happened is is Jay, what's happened is and Nick Nick Fury the LMD Nick Fury has been reprogrammed and he's basically making them a fighting force. The problem is is there's no real logic to that. It. They've kind of gone crazy. So Black Panther shuts it down. Of course, Deadpool being Deadpool facilitates the whole thing. So 
And, of course, we find out at the very end that there's now another facility being opened up that's now just going to take several years to, to recreate. So we'll see these guys again. But this is pretty good. What you got? We, we both have Doctor Strange, Surge, and Supreme number Bam. three. Awesome book. Wow. So we I feel like we've seen this guy before. It's um, Ephemera is his name? Hmm. The, basically, the guy comes in and he looks like he's 90 years old, but really he's 19 years old. I, this felt very much to me like a middle story. Like we're we're setting the seeds for what's going to happen with with Doctor Druid. Yeah, and 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 I like the tattoo stuff. Um, I'm I personally I don't have any tattoos, but yeah. but I, it has become such a, a big part of our culture uh, to have sleeves oh, so. and and, yeah. and this chest kid, pieces. This kid and, goes for this goes to a mysterious place he's never seen before, and he gets this weird tattoo. And basically, the tattoo is draining his life force. And, of course, Doctor Strange goes in to try to save the kid. And he finds that the weapon this guy is using is something that only could have been forged in his forge. Right. That's the big key. That's the takeaway from the book. So, good book. In Strange's Forge. To be Strange's Forge. Exactly. Yeah. Strange's Forge. All right. Excalibur. I love Jamie, man. The more I see the King Jamie, the more I really, so, really like him. War, war, war Wolves. War Wolves. Yes. Um, this was this was a big callback to like eighties and nineties Excalibur, right. yeah. Um, and Cullen Bloodstone. Bloodstone. Uh, Who I always, is Elsa's brother? I almost always say Cullen Bunn, and that's not right. <laughs> that's not the character. Um, <laughs> Cullen Bloodstone, which of Elsa. Young Avengers yeah. and uh, Avengers Academy mm-hmm. and whatever the the yeah. uh, most dangerous game Initiative. knockoff yeah. Yeah. was. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Cullen has gone through quite a transformation from this geeky little preteen to this man. Yeah, he's who, a, but he's this playboy kind of, you know, I get to do whatever I want because I'm filthy rich. So he buys he's a bloodstone, right? So he he buys all these war, war wolves from to hunt them to hunt them. Yeah. Well, what's happening is is now um, Apocalypse needs their heads because he needs to do research. To do, to get more information as to how to replicate some of the information that they some of the, the fact that they can actually uh, use someone else's skin the apocalypse thing it doesn't matter yeah it's, <laughs> apocalypse thing, apocalypse he, uh, thing. He's, they, he, they need it for apocalypse stuff <laughs> so yeah they um, and of course now by now they're now being hunted by him because now he's like because oh. Cullen's like oh oh you used powers well if you're gonna do that then I think I'll hunt mutants and so yeah which is. Really, a Colin's mistake. kind of a douche. Really, a mistake because Rogue is going to tear his head off. I'm not sure Rogue can't. You know, he has a demonic entity inside of him, and he can turn into a completely invulnerable monster. Okay, she's going to try to rip his head off. Yeah, How's that? yeah, he's a problem. Myrtle Hulk number thirty-one. Zeno. Zeno. We have Zeno. Um, I will say, Zinmu. I like the Zeno character. Zim, now, by Zimnu. the way, Zemnu. Zemnu. We have seen Zemnu before. You know where we've seen Zemnu before? No, but you're going to tell us. Hey, smarty pants. Fine. <laughs> I'm going to act that way. I will. So, he first appears in Journey into Mystery, volume number 62. Zemnu is the first Hulk. Called Hulk. Wasn't called the Incredible Hulk. Wasn't gray. Wasn't green. He's this big, hairy monster called the Hulk. Before the Incredible Hulk existed, this guy existed first. This is what, that when I first saw the character, I'm like, I've seen this before. Where have I seen this before? This is the guy. And I thought it was from Looney Tunes. Okay, not Gossamer, but good good call. Not Gossamer. Anyway, so the it's Gossamer with a Viking helmet. Ta-da, Only white. Could have killed. Anyway, and so with psychic powers. Um so Zimnu though is essentially is manipulating people by um, trying to hearken them back to their childhood. You remember me? You remember the taste of Kool Aid and the and a cool and a more mathematical. Beckbridge Farm, remember. <laughs> basically, yeah. So uh, good story, and and he's rewriting. Mean, the, the fun thing about this is he's rewriting reality in people's brains because the the first part of the book is the scientist that's working with Banner that got busted by Daredevil, and she's remembering Daredevil being this first superhero she he saw, it. and then he's and, rewriting it as Zemnu was there, not Daredevil, right? And and Zemnu saved the day, right. so yeah. it was a Zemnu, no, definitely was not. So Marvel's X number two. Uh, this is, of course, Alex Ross. This is a prequel to the to the uh, Utopia, Planet X, all those kind of things. Uh, David is the only human left alive that is still human. Everyone else that wasn't already mutated now has been mutated. 
Uh, he hitches a ride with this random truck driver to get into New York City to find Spider-Man, Captain America, somebody to help him. The truck driver happens to be Johnny Blaze. Of course, he doesn't know this. Well, Johnny gets into gets in the, through the tunnel, and he says, "Kid, whatever, no matter what you do, stay in the truck. Don't get out." And of course, he turns into Johnny Blaze and starts destroying these monsters. And of course, the kid runs away. As uh, Johnny stops and he says, "Listen, whoever can hear me, this kid David needs your help. Find him, get him to Spider-Man. I promise you, I can. I tried to help him. He he got scared of me. He's going." So this kid has a has this horrible Green Goblin mask on, but he he's not been re- not been recognized as human. Left all these other mutants are like they're leaving him alone. Um, he basically goes to he sees this fight starting. Spider Man rescues him. You find out that the heroes are still alive. I mean Daredevil's still out there. Captain America's still out there. The the mutants the X Men are still out there. Spider Man is still there, but Mary Jane's been killed. Mayday Parker, which we know later on is spider woman later mm-hmm. on we know that she's still there too she's very young so we're trying to figure out what happened the rumor of course is that uh reed richards created this virus and now it's kind of backfired on everybody so well i, I can tell you from x-men fantastic four he's not going to create a virus that turns everybody into mutants no he hates them hate is a strong word Mm-mm. reed's a douche yeah that's true savage avengers no wow <laughs> it's always fun when Conan will, can can sm- give the smackdown to somebody, and the fact that now Strange has been using this this uh, Iron Man armor, which is which is Doctor Sh- Doctor Doom's Iron Man armor, it just what a fantastic story. They did rescue um, uh, Doctor Doctor Voodoo, right? Um, and of course, uh, Kulangoth gets his head chopped off. Pretty awesome. I mean, just. I, but, he, but he doesn't get his head chopped off. Conan throws the cursed amulet around his oh, head. Oh, that's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and just pops off. Do you think this kills me? This just slows me down. And Shumagorath, he that's what that's where Kulangath is getting his powers, is he's he's basically promising Shumagorath Earth. And so Shumagorath, a a a tiny, almost um Starro like Shumagorath has been yeah. holding uh, Doctor Voodoo in, yeah. in Thrall, and so <laughs> Conan fixes it by ripping the Shumagora. Just rips it off. Here's 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 <laughs> Strange. No 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 no. To, no. Ah! <laughs> here's Strange going. I can do this. I can do this. He's trying to use the, his scalpel to get it off. And Conan's like, nope. <clears throat> one rip. One one thing. One bandaid off. So great story. Um, and and then ultimately. They drop Conan back into Belize. <laughs> back when Belize, he's like, you mother... F- <laughs> <laughs> the next time we meet sorcerers, I will cut your head off. Oh, so great. Spirit of Ghost Rider, Mother of Demons. Yes. Origin story for Lilith. Yep. Um, we knew that already, but... We, we knew it, but it was a retelling of the origin story. Because you haven't seen this character since the 90s. No, right. Uh, since well, Spirits of Vengeance. So, I don't know if about you, but when I read the beginning where she's telling her story, I'm hearing Galadriel. I'm hearing Galadriel's voice from Lord of the Rings, and she's like, they got that beautiful kind of British accent. She's talking about her story and how it began, and Earth was beautiful, and it was paradise, and then God hated me because I made demons. <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever see um, Van Wilder, Rise of Taj? Yeah. The, the little brunette in there with the cockney. That's whose accent I <laughs> I got you. Uh, so, yeah, we're now finding out she's been part of the reason that Johnny's been attacked constantly. She's she's the reason that there's a constant battle against Johnny Blaze. And now she's trying to go after the spirit of corruption. Yeah. Who is now in? Danny Catch. Danny Catch. So she says Jack-O-Lantern after him, too, who's been dead for a long time. So... Kind of fun. The Rise of Kylo Ren. Oh, oh man, yeah, what a great what a book. book. Yeah, I haven't um, read it though. So very popular. The entry, the entry into the Knights of Ren is a meaningful death, and this is a lot of flashback and Ben telling the now, where story. Where did Knights of Ren begin? Is it did he start the Knights of Ren or who started the Knights of Ren? We don't really know. Okay, Ren, the main character Ren, is not. It's all about the shadow, the dark side of the force. Okay. And all of them are force users that basically worship chaos. It's like, let's go find something to burn. That's the tagline okay. constantly. Cool. And Snoke, in this very groovy daddy apocalypse kind of way, <laughs> I about had him do a spit take with your wife. <laughs> groovy daddy Snoke, uh, <laughs> as Ben 
Luke goes to <laughs> to confront Ben about this darkness he's feeling uh, in in issue one, and he lashes out as seen in the movie. And Luke's down, and the temple's burned. Well, three of three of um, Skywalker students survive. They've been off planet, mm -hmm. and they come back and find Ben. Ben's like, mm, "Yeah, I had to do it. He tried to kill me." And this is a, a flashback issue of him killing one of them and claiming that was a good death. And they're like, mm, "But is it really?" <laughs> With two of them still alive. Um, he trapped two of them in a in a Jedi um, cache, so they're like, mm, "Come with us, and let's see if we can't go get a real good death." So, I, I suspect issue four is going to tie that that loop and uh, close that loop. And this is this is oh, if you're a Star Wars fan, it's the most anticipated Star Wars book for several years because we don't really know enough about Kylo Ren. We don't know and, about the seduction of right. Ben Solo, which yeah. is really what this is. It isn't the rise of, of Kylo Ren. It's, a it's the seduction of Ben Solo. Yeah. Because at this point, Snoke is not supreme leader of anything. No. He's tending a garden. And and he really is. He's he's groovy daddy gardener <laughs> Snoke. Groovy daddy. So next we have Thor number three. So this is, you're not going to have a battle for, for favorite book of the week. I can tell now because one of us is going to. This is my favorite book of the week. For one sure. of us got to pick Alpha something Sony else. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, just. Donnie. I will say again. I tweeted Donnie Cates and said this may be the best comic book I've ever read. Um, it had all the right action notes. It had all of the right. Um, it had all of the right. I don't know. Emotional notes because it's a hero who is doing the right thing. But his allies cannot accept that he's doing the right thing. Um, at the same time, you totally understand where Beta Ray Bill's coming from. Galactus right. destroyed his planet. Right. And, and best of all, Stormbreaker is shattered on Mjolnir. Thor, so Thor throws the hammer, misses Bill. Well, does miss Bill. Bill catches it. Yeah. And tries to get it back, and Bell's like, no, I'm not and letting it go. And he holds on to it, and he's like, brother, I will rip your arm off to get Mjolnir back. He's like, you're going to have to try. And you're going to have to try. And so he's standing there holding it, and you're watching the veins in his arm bulge. And Beta Ray Bill is not a lightweight. No. And, I mean, he runs with the Annihilation Scourge easily. So, so, so <laughs> Thor says, all right, I guess I'll have to get another hammer. Summons Stormbreaker and breaks it over Mjolnir. And it's like, <gasps> Oh my God! I, I didn't think it was pop. That's the ultimate betrayal. Because Storm, Stormbreaker is Mjolnir in another version, so they're both sentient hammers. They shouldn't be able to break like that. The fact that he did it shows how much power he now has. What he shows what he's now wielding. I do like the fact that the the the, the costume change from being Galactus's uh, puppet to back to him being regular Thor again. That's pretty great. And yeah, I, Thor can just turn it off. Right, he can turn it off when he wants to. But I don't think Galactus realizes this. Galactus tries to attack him, like, "Hey, you're my... Oh, no, no, you're my puppet." He's like, "No, no, I am no puppet to you." It's like, it's like, it's you're, intense. You're a being of, of cosmic importance. I'm a god. I'm a god. Exactly yeah. right. So this is the most arrogant Thor I've seen in a very, very long time. And I think that's why he's having trouble picking up the new version of Milnir. Right. I think he's, he's really struggling. Not quite. It's there, and he has it, but it's not quite. Perfect in his hand. It's not quite cooperating with his current right. behavior. Um, what's interesting, though... He's not going to sit that throne comfortably. So, at the very end, as he's going after his brother, his true, actual, not blood brother, not actual related brother, but blood brother, you see this, you see this rainbow bridge coming to stop him, and it's Sif standing in front of him. Uh, Sif the all-seeing. Sif the all-seeing, exactly. Seeing, standing in front of him saying, and, no, and no. So, at one point in time, Beta Ray Bill is going after Galactus before the fight starts between Thor and Beta Ray Bill. And he's like, I'm sorry. I can't stand out of the way. The only way is through. And Sif says the exact same, same thing, thing to Thor. And I think Thor throws down with her. Uh, we'll see. We'll I am see. your king. Stand aside. No, this is wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he'll wake up. Maybe this will be the wake up call. I don't know. Um, I don't think. It, I don't think there's anything to wake up from. Something that's going to destroy the universe, destroy all of creation, is worth making a deal with the devil. What I don't understand is why he wouldn't just stop what he's doing and look at Beta Ray Bill and say, "Listen, we have to do this." Here's because, why we have to do this. Because in Beta Ray Bill's justification, 
in his mind, there is no darker thing than siding with Galactus. And there is darker things than siding with Galactus. Right. right. I, fa- you could some, write, I'm looking, I read you this could book write Green Lantern season two ep- issue. One. <laughs> I, I feel like I read this book feeling like, man, you guys, you could have just talked it out. My God, I mean, you're he, you offered Stormbreaker to him when he was at his lowest point. You, you've you've done these great things. Now why do this? So because he's not Odin. Odin, he's Thor. He's Thor, exactly. All right, so X Force number seven. I'm going to say this is why I'm really happy with the new Wolverine run because yeah, Ben Percy can really, really write a story. There have been all these assassinations of, and they're extraordinary. I'm um, extraordinary. Impossibly I mean, nope. extraordinary. The only person that could have done it is Domino. Right, and you so you spend the whole thing going, how did they steal her powers? Right. How do you steal a mutant power like that? How is that possible? But they did. They didn't steal her power. They cloned her ass and made it a darker version of her. You see at the very end. So there's a new character. This is a first appearance. First appearance, new character at the end of this book. Amazing. And she literally is a reverse version of Domino. Yeah, she's a black-skinned mutant with a white a white eye. Exactly. So a white-skinned mutant with a black eye. Yeah, and and by is... black, we mean literally ink black, jet oh, yeah. black. She's not... Not she African is literally American. a dark version. I've always pictured. I have always pictured uh, Nina as 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 African American. Yeah, that way when and, she came out in Deadpool that way, I'm like, this is perfect. Yeah, I was yeah. like, they got yeah. that right. Yeah. And and she she might be she might be Betty with a good hair in <laughs> that way, and and she's got the flowing locks. But this I have always good. pictured Nina Thurman as a a black character, and so it's interesting to see. Nega, Neganina. It, it is Neganina, yeah. It is Neganina. Nega, Scott. <clears throat> so, X-Men. John Hickman. Burn it to the ground. That's my favorite part of the book. If, it, if they don't do what you want, burn it to the ground. So, um, at the very beginning, you see Destiny, and you see uh, Mystique, and they're talking. Destiny says, listen, this is what's going to happen. And she says, no, no, you're not going to die. No, yeah, listen. Listen to me when I'm saying to you. This is what's going to happen. And she predicts everything because it's destiny. She can predict all this. Mm-hmm. And she says, this is what they're going to ask you to do. But some, and you're going to be able to do it. But at some point, you have to realize that there's a point you have to stop doing it and give up and, and just let it go. Um, but what's interesting is we now know that the facility or that the mother... Mother mold. Mother mold uh, was destroyed, but now it's been rebuilt without a mother mold. Um, she goes there and she plants basically a, a flower there so she can come back and forth if she wants to. She doesn't destroy Nimrod like she should have. She comes back and she reports to, to Xavier and to Magneto, like, well, you just destroy He's like, well, she didn't tell me to. But I, I'd have to tell you to do that? I was like, are you serious? This is, the, this, is, this is for the good of everyone. And, of course, she wants Destiny back. That's her payment. Fine, I'll do this for you. Destiny comes back. And, of course, Charles realizes he can't do that. You can't bring bring well if you bring back. if you bring destiny back, then she sees exactly what they're up to, and a whole section of the immediate population splinters off to follow and move against them. Yes, and because what Xavier's doing is trying to prevent mutant extinction by some dark methods. Control. And, yeah. It's really control. It, it is for the greater good. We, we, we hear the greater good. We heard the greater good many, many times. And this is that greater good thing. Um, you see it happening in House of X, Powers of X. This is the seeds of the end of Krakoa. Guys, when, when all of this came about, you cannot have a mutant paradise. It doesn't exist within the Marvel Universe. And I said Krakoa, will, will, Krakoa itself will die. Oh, yeah. At the end of all of this, Krakoa is dead. Um, I mean, I, I picture Sabretooth down in its guts just slaughtering all of Krakoa that it can. But uh, Mystique is going to move against them unless, unless, and this is this is the, the caveat to that, unless Xavier does resurrect Destiny and somehow sways her to his side. Jonathan Hickman, you are an effing genius. Mm-hmm. So this is, it's funny, there's another podcast that we listen to, it's local, Geeks and Hair of the Earth, and they were talking about this early on and how Hickman is the guy they call in when they need to save something. Save Avengers, yep. save Fantastic Four, save, X, save X-Men, you call Hickman in. Because Hickman is the world-building, universe-changing writer, and he literally has done that. So um, I, I'm, I'm always excited to see what's going to happen next. Thank God there's no more Fallen Angels out there. 
So, but we have Hellions next and Cable, but Wolverines next and week. And Children of the Atom. And Children of the Atom, which I think is just going to be. I can't wait. All right, so my surprise of the week. Your surprise. Of the not week? that I didn't think it was bad. It was going to be bad necessarily, but but because I did not expect it to be as good as it was, or that it would mean as much to me as Batman Pennyworth. Rest in peace, mm-hmm. number one. Um, and. I want to say one of the choices, I won't say it's mine, one of the choices of the book of the week is Thor number three. My surprise of the week was Mother Demons. Fair. This is very good. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, that's not one of my favorites. I'm, I'm, and I'll, I'm you're not even reading the Ghost Rider run, are you? Oh, I love Ghost Rider. Oh, okay. Oh, just you and I are both reading Ghost Rider run. Oh, yeah. And, of course, the continuation of this is Ghost Rider number five, right. which I can't wait for. Um, I'm going to say my favorite of the week is going to be Batman uh, Pennyworth, Rest in Peace. Cool. And I know yours will be uh, Thor. Thor. Hands <laughs> down. So so here's why Thor is meaningful. There, there's two books that I read that really genuinely are surprises. And if you know me and if you've paid attention to what I read, I don't read Thor and I don't read I don't read Hulk. Right. Don't care for either character in general. Uh, Thor and Hulk are two of the best things running. Um, it's funny too, because here's the thing: when when they when they did this new Hulk back in Avengers, the No Road of the No Road Home or whatever it was, mm-hmm. um, they had this new character, and, and we're like, okay, this is interesting. So now he can't be killed. So when the when the first book comes out, it didn't do very well. I mean, it was not that hot. People were like, okay, whatever. But by issue two, literally, people were clamoring for that book, which is still a very expensive. It's not a cheap book to buy anymore because it's uh, um, that's like a hundred dollar book because of the first appearance of Doctor Fry. Right. So uh, you've got some amazing stuff going on in these books. Um, so the great thing is now next we're going to start talking about next week's previews. Previews. Yeah. Is join next us. Week. Join us next for the yeah. for the previews episode. Um, and. Guys, we really genuinely appreciate you watching, watching us, listening to, watching us, listening to me, watching, watching us, watching. and listening to us. The horror is the um, watching. It's, it's. I mean, I guess we could do this and no one could listen to us, but it, it, the more fun thing is when we actually have people comment. Oh, and by the way, so join in. we did have a comment the other day. We did um, from one of our local listeners. Uh, his name is Tim. Uh, thank you, Tim, again for asking. Sometimes there's some ask. Tim basically said that sometimes it's hard to understand some of the things that are going on if you don't have the background knowledge. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's true. If you haven't been reading these things for a long time, you may not necessarily know. You may not understand. Well, when we talk about Thor, we say, oh, yeah, when he was frog. And you're like, frog? Wait, there was a frog Thor? Yes, there was a frog Thor. The thing is, when we talk about these things, if you have questions, send us on Facebook. Send us a message on printerpanelpodcast.com. Send us all this stuff because, quite frankly, we can answer the questions for you. Or if you're coming to the shop, we can answer questions for you, too. Yeah. I mean, honestly, guys, we are looking to do a more in-depth dive. The, the podcast didn't originally set itself up to just be, here's what we read this week. We went into a lot of detail. And about the first 17 episodes of our show was just specials. Yeah, we did um, a special about Conan. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. hey, hey, hey. Don't don't be so damn dismissive about that special. I'm very passionate. About I wasn't dismissive. Was, we did a special about Conan. I Ugh. mean, hey, I, I mean, we did. We, we even did a what if special, which I want to come back to. All right, so he is in head. one episode insulted Star Wars and I, Star Trek I, I, and Battlestar it was Galactica, clearly and tongue-in-cheek. now it was clearly and a joke. now Conan. So get him, internet. All right, guys, thanks very much for for listening, watching, doing what you do. We do appreciate you very much. Love you. Bye.